Hi guys, welcome back to another video here on this channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at a very cool tool that we have inside of ZBrush, which is called the Morph Target. So we've already talked about layers in a previous video. You want, might want to check it right here on the sidebar or something. And um, layers are a great way to add like specific details such as the scars, I don't know, like changes and things like that. Morph target, I think, works a little bit better when the change is going to be really aggressive. So I'm going to go here to the morph target menu inside of ZBrush. Uh, I'm going to store a morph target for this character that I have right here. And let's say we're working on a production and one of our like clients or the art lead says, hey, we want to make this guy a little bit older. So one of the things that I can start doing here is I can start adding like uh, some eye backs over here. We can maybe add some more wrinkles here on the top of the eyebrows. I'm gonna like exaggerate a little bit of the of the um, what's the word the frontal bone right here. Uh, one of the tips that I've been giving is try to use the Trim Dynamic brush to clean up some forms instead of going into a Smooth brush. Smooth is really good, but if you combine it with Trim Dynamic, you're gonna get cleaner shapes as well. So another tip that we can have here is when we're sculpting wrinkles, especially wrinkles and folds and things like that, you might want to change your clay buildup alpha to the round alpha. I really like using alpha 12. And alpha 12 is great because as you can see right here, we can start adding things that are going to look a little bit more organic. Usually, for instance, here on the side of the eye, the upper eyelid will kind of like fall on top of the element and it'll create like a, like a really, really interesting eye back. So we're again, we're making this character way, way, way older by adding all of this expression lines. On the nasal label fold, it's a, a fold that I always talk about when we're doing characters. I'm gonna exaggerate this a little bit more. I'm just gonna make this grow. There's this very famous like um, TikTok uh, filter right now going around, especially here in Mexico, where uh, you can get either older or younger. So Morph Target is gonna allow us to do this. We're gonna be able to switch between one and the other. So let's keep adding a little bit more volume here. And again, see how I am, whenever I add volume, I always try to add it in a very sort of like, scratchy like natural way because if you add things like this it, it's very very aggressive I, I prefer to build up my elements in this case the like the fat pads and all of this like segments so that we can get a, a slightly nicer effect i'm gonna smooth all of this out you can see it still looks a little bit lumpy so this is where train dynamic comes into place because we can use it to flatten all of those areas without really removing all of the detail that we have right there so you can see how the character is definitely changing and one of the cool things about Morph Target is that you can actually also like change things such as position. So we can make, for instance, the eye a little bit smaller like this. Let's push them out a little bit more. Let's move the mouth down so it's a little bit more tired. Underneath the lips, we have a very important like a group of muscles. So I'm going to just add a little bit of the effect right there. The chain, I'm going to separate a little bit as well. And let's just start smoothing this out. Over here, you usually start getting a little bit of a cavity when, when skin loses a little bit of elasticity. So kind of like zombie fi thing that we're getting here. I always move the character to the side. I don't know why I do that. Let's do that right there. Perfect. Cool. And yeah, so all of these things were working inside of this thing called the morph target. And the cool thing about the morph target is that we have a couple of options. First, at any point, I can just use, use this option called switch. And what switch will do, as you can see, is we're going to switch between the different morph targets. You can save this morph target as a different subtool, and then you have like variations of the character. Like maybe you're doing a game or a, a film where you have like the evil tween or something like that. And, um, and this is a very, very cool way to create variations without losing your original character right here. But that's not all of the tricks that I'm going to be showing you right now. Let me just uh, sculpt here a little bit more. And uh, while I sculpt, I just want to remind you guys that we have our premium courses available. Right now, at the time of this recording, we have our first premium course, which is Weapons Creation. It's right here in the description. But I'm actually working on the next premium course, like as of, well, not right now <laughs> because I'm recording this, but um, on the on the off time, I'm, uh, I'm working on it. So it's going to be available very, very soon. Make sure to follow us everywhere so that you can get the latest news. So yeah, there you go. As you can see, I'm I'm creating a completely, completely new character. Let's add some like more intense wrinkles here on the on the union of the nose with everything else. We can even add some like expression lines here on the top. There we go. Smooth them out a little bit so they're not as intense. And we can still have this like very like stylized character, but now we have this very, very interesting switch between one and the other. So the cool thing again about the morph brush is that, or sorry, the morph target is that it allows us to have two different versions of the same character. 
you can save this again, as I mentioned, as a blend shape because we're not adding any more topology or any more points. And, uh, and yeah, you can generate some very, very interesting changes. Now I'm gonna show you one of the tricks that I was mentioning, which is the morph brush. So other than this morph target, we have a brush that normally doesn't work when we're using like any other thing. So if I make this cylinder a poly mesh 3D and I try to like whatever, dynamesh it or let's go dynamesh, dynamesh, there we go. So we're sculpting, we're doing whatever. If I grab the morph brush, which shortcut is BM and then um, ba -ba -ba, they change it a G, BMG, it's gonna say, hey, you need to have a morph target. Otherwise it's not gonna work. But if I go over here to the character and I have the morph target, the morph brush allows me to blend between the original character and the old character. See that? So pretty much it's kind of like an eraser. It's not actually an eraser. It's just a, a brush that blends again between the two different points. And the reason why this is so powerful is because imagine we're working again, we're in the, on the morph target right now and our art supervisor comes and says, hey, I really like what you did with the eyes, but I don't like what you did with the mouth or I really like what you did with the mouth, but not with the eyes. Like they can, they can pick and choose, right? Like different things that they like about the character. And by working with the morph target, I can just go like, okay, fine, BMG. And we're gonna go over here. And maybe if we don't like what's happening on the ice, we just bring the ice back to the original like situation. And we can blend softly from the previous situation that we have to this new element right here. Really, really, really powerful to, to do so. You can of course do the like the scratches and the things as well. And, and it's also gonna be a really good way to, to blend between each of the of the different versions. But it's a very like non very cool, non-destructive way to generate interesting shapes here with your character. Now I do want to continue working a little bit here. I'm I'm a little bit inspired right now. So let's make this guy again the evil twin. We're still inside of the of the original morph target, or the, the, the morph target. And uh, I don't know, I kind of feel like adding some like intense scars like going up. You guys saw like a uh, Star Wars, uh, the Obi-Wan series where they have like this executors or something. Like this is the kind of thing. I've also been reading uh, Mistborn, the Mistborn saga, which is a really, really cool book series. So adding this sort of like things here on the morph target could also be a really cool way to to add more character to our our um or, or our more personality to our character right here. Let's hurt some like geometric sort of like scars. This is a little bit more of a design process that we're doing right now, but all of this design could potentially create a really interesting character right here so i'm gonna go up let's go back let's go up and then over here there we go so all of this is being saved on the morph target and at any point again we can go back to the options over here to morph target and switch between the original and the able version of our character so super 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 again like easy way to generate a lot of detail. And then if we see that the detail that we're adding is way, way too much, Morph Brush allows us or will allow us to generate and blend between the both of the elements in a nicer and faster way. So yeah, that's it, my friends. Hope you liked this video. I'm gonna do some quick renders with this guy so that you can see the thumbnail. And if you wanna learn more about the 3D world, make sure to check our library. We have a ton of shorts, a ton of videos, and we're gonna be doing more stuff. Make sure also to leave me a comment if there's a specific things that you want to learn about. I have a plan that I'm trying to follow, but also I'm always open to suggestions. So that's it, my friends. Thank you very much, and I'll see you back on the next video. Bye-bye.